Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is David with Dub's Treasure Store. I bring uh, an interruption to the normal programming in today's show, uh, mostly in part to do with the um, the Batman Massacre. Now, I know that's highly controversial. I'm not going to really touch down on any of the controversy with it. I just thought this was so interesting, it made me stop what I was normally going to do tonight. I wrote a paper in high school and then got it peer reviewed. Yeah, I'm sorry, I wrote a paper the first year in my college, right straight out of high school, got it uh, peer reviewed. And um, it's a Dark Knight review uh, synopsis on the actual movie. So I don't know where it's going to go, but this was um, 113 2009. And I thought that I would um, basically go over with my movie review, because I took a class where we did movie reviews. So, this is my Dark Knight review, and I thought it would just be perfect timing to give my review with what has happened at the Dark Knight Rises release, the, the premiere release. So, um, it was actually for, this, this paper that I wrote was actually for an English class. All right, so, all right, let's start right out on this. Many movies are thrown together just shy of $1 million budget. But The Dark Knight, however, had a much larger budget, okay? So, um, surprisingly, it does not take a genius to know that the movie, the Dark Knight movie, is not a low-budget action flick. And um, the producers could afford a high-salary actors despite the expensive technology that enhances the graphics in this film. Um, and as I go through this, this was mostly um, my review from just seeing the trailers, just seeing the early script that came to me and our class. So um, that's why I'm trying to just go through this fast because it's not a part of the normal programming that I wanted to bring you on today's show. Okay? So. As this was one of the longest Batman action movies, it was also the most dram uh, dramatic display of character, wit, and love. And I recommend The Dark Knight as a great movie. I mean, I, I, I'm just a regular guy like you. I mean, I like an action flick just like to the next ac uh, action liking guy. Um, so, I recommend it. And um, in my opinion, it was probably one of the best movies of 08. Alright. So, characters, protagonists, and or antagonists they feel like real villains and real heroes. And uh, either a movie should have the audience jumping in their seats for joy or clinging to their partner in suspense for some awful tragedy. Um, the actors' names, you know, of course, are Christian Bell as Batman, Heath Ledger as the notorious Joker, and the beautiful Maggie uh, Gyllenhaal stars as Bruce Wayne's childhood friend and part-time lover, uh, whatever. But Brian Eckert plays Harvey Dent, also known as Harvey Two-Face. Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon, Chief of Police. Supplemented uh, characters include the uh, butler Michael Caine and actor Morgan Freeman. So, I mean, we all know this, but here's what I thought. Throughout the movies, uh, throughout the movie, the characters die off or are brought to justice as the movie advances to its climax. Audiences will change their opinions of the protagonists as they develop their agendas, whether hidden or revealed. Um, and as a result, which turned into the villains. Uh, and I, I went on to say this that um, to the audience that I was originally reading this to, that um, just the amount of actor involvement and computer-generated imaging graphics uh, that went into this movie allow it to earn an A-plus from a character review alone. So, during the movie, its plot develops fast because in the first 10 minutes, all of the gangsters and villains are introduced right away. So each bad guy wants money, power, and infamy, which we normally find that in, you know, the subliminal hidden messages in most of these N New World Order videos. And it, it seems like the Joker, however, wants to, you know, just cause chaos in the slums of Gotham, which is a part of the original comic line, so. Um, the bad guys are not only the characters with internal struggles because the Dark Knight uh, has Batman uh, is fighting his own internal demons as well as the social caste system, caste system of Gotham City. So 
if you go over to I think I think it's Alex Jones yeah Alex Jones Infowars um, channel um, he, he gives a really good synopsis um, breaking down the the all of the videos before this happened like he was dead on with this but this paper that I wrote was nothing about that I just thought this was good timing that I was going through some of um, my globalization papers and I stumbled upon um, some of my English papers and I thought that this was like perfect timing that I might as well talk about this since this happened. Alright, so since there, because there is so much crime in Gotham City, even Batman looks like a menace to society. Uh, because Batman breaks the law and bends the rules to, to bring justice, uh, which is unlawful to do. And, and like you saw in, you know, The Dark Knight, at the end, they used, they violated everybody's rights to use everybody, to, to use and connect everybody's cell phone together to create a, so, a 3D sonar image so that he could catch the Joker. Um, but during the epilogues, people will see that the police chief working with Batman at times, publicly Gordon would deny any involvement with Batman or affiliates. Which, this is the first class movie that grips audiences' attention with hard times to come for heroes. And wild times leading the villains to their self-destructive paths. So, um, if you're having people jumping out of planes and hopping off the roofs of skyscrapers, well then just to get information from support actors is not enough for extreme viewers. Then wait until villains get their chance to spread chaos around the movie. And in, in, in the second one, it does seem a lot like, you know, if you try to be like Batman, you can't take it all on yourself unless you're the global elite banker that is the standardized globalist. Because uh, if, if you're just the individual, you're a fat, loser, chicken-faced dude who is a sociopath or is a, psych is a psychotic person, which is kind of sad because that's... A lot of the main archetypes in vigilante movies today, they don't want you to think an individual can rise up and make a change for good. So, continuing. Um, if, besides the usual class of fist to faces, bombs will be exploding all around, politicians may be assassinated, and tons of car to car street chases ending with rocket propelled grenades are all widespread throughout the movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I mean, you know, th this shouldn't be anything new to you. It's just, I, I was, I wrote this at the um, beginning of 2009, and I just thought this was perfect timing. So, um, the action-packed movie will please almost any audience with the simple drama that characters unleash on screen. Unlike the dramatic events that affect audiences, there is always a looming feeling that someone is going to die, which there really is in that movie, or get seriously injured throughout the movie. So, this effect makes viewers grip to their seats and, you know, or bite their lips and wonder what's going to happen next, and, and ooing and aahing. So most people will enjoy the movie and may want to watch it again. Some may dislike the movie, but all would still agree that it is an epic movie because The Dark Knight was a massive undertaking on the Hollywood sets. And the movie seems like the people are going to die every second and actors are thrown into situations where they should have died. So after the climax of the movie is over, the alleged actors uh, that are the uh, vigilantes have surprise reappearances later on in the movie. It's actually same thing with the villains, but I was just trying to go through this really fast because it's not important to what I was trying to talk about. But on an unfortunate note, the famous actor Heath Ledger actually died during the shooting of the movie. We know that. His passing may have slowed the production, yet the movie has finished and published without anyone replacing his spot. Um, the following months later, it became only the second film to earn more than $500 million at the United States box office. Also, the film, it, and that was at the time that I wrote this paper, uh, um, January 13th, 2009. So it's probably gross more. Also, the film is to be nominated for several awards, which include Heath Ledger's supporting role of the Joker. Um, and I just want to conclude on this uh, because I, I, I just wanted to get through this really fast. Okay, the conclusion, um, 
it, it, you know, I, I'm not going to spoil the conclusion in case you haven't seen it, which I'm sure you have. You know, it's an action-packed flick. There are many reasons why this movie is the number one most viewed movie in America. Uh, during 2008, it made the most money and had the highest paid actors to date. And The Dark Knight had more real explosion than older other older movies. This is a movie that all America will watch into 2009 and it deserves a five-star review. And that's what I thought at the time that I wrote this. Now my opinions have changed and I'm not going to express those opinions, but that was a quick synopsis of what I thought. All right, so getting back to uh, what we were talking about when I got um, cut off because I was uploading segment one of today's show and I was using a other memory card that was uh, slower and lower memory and it just cut off. So if you're watching that and just cuts off, this is where I was leaving off. The Paleolithic Prescriptions for the Diseases of Civilization. Um, so, now that our life expectancy has increased and is often held as one of modern civilization's greatest accomplishments uh, in some ways which were developed by world uh, leaders far less healthy, that lead less healthy lifestyles uh, than our ancestors, uh, throughout most of our evolution, um, our, in history, our humans that are being more physically active. Uh, I think that plays a big part in it, is a TMBC, a, a time model behavioral change uh, graph. You know, like that's why Weight Watchers and Quick Weight Loss Centers is so powerful and is so informative to the user that signs up for those things because it actually makes you consciously aware of what you're putting into your body. Like, Another reason why they're so successful is because it actually makes you count every calorie that you put into your body. So that is how people drop that weight really fast. Um, and you know, at the, uh, it's it's funny because at, you know our ancestors, our ancient ancestors, didn't really drink and smoke like we do today and they spent their lives scavenging and hunting for animal protein while gathering vegetable foods with some insects thrown in for good measure which we don't have to do that today because like I ate today which is giving me bad heartburn I can go right to um, a corner and get any fast food that I want and eat anything so they stayed fit through traveling great distances each day over the savannas and beyond but today we may survive longer, but in old age are beset by chronic disease. That's a very important note. Our life expectancy has increased, but is followed by chronic disease. Uh, heart disease, diabetes, let's see, um, high blood pressure, uh, cancers that shape the experience of old age and the wealthy industrialized nations. So the prevalence of these diseases of civilization have increased rapidly over the past 60 years and I mean it's documented you can look at go look it up th th these facts are not made up and it's just it, it, I think that if you study the secrets of the ancients the cure is there just like I said it's not only the caring capacity of the environment it's the lives that they led, the activity that they did just for survival. Their means of survival was burning tons of calories while trying to get calories. Like we don't go around engaging in active consciousness saying, I'm going to spend, um, you know, 300 calories looking for only 150 calories. We don't think like that. But in the time of survivability, if something major happened, you need to know that that's a mindset that you need to have. Um, it may be in your, you know, apocalyptic preparation is that you need to weigh out, you know, risk for reward. If I'm going to go traverse all these lands and spend all this calories, what, am, what rewards am I going to gain out of it? Because you're not just going to be able to eat insects and bugs and, and get enough nutrients and proteins. Just like today, you can't eat all the foods you want and expect to get all the nutrients your body needs from, from just crap foods. That's why there's dietary supplements, there's your vitamins, and there's minerals. That's why, that's why you know, nutritional advisors advise that you take extra vitamins and minerals to get the nutrients that your body needs. Because uh, you, you can't just get it from consuming the foods that we eat on a normal basis. So, um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
I guess that's that. You know, I could continue to go on uh, documenting what other anthrop famous anthropologists have said. Like, let's say this. Anthrop I'll, I'll, I'll close on this. Anthropologist George Armili Armiliagos suggests that the downward tra trajectory for human health began with the earliest human village settlements some 10,000 years ago when humans began farming rather than gathering. So he's suggesting that it started all the way back then uh, because they off, often switched to single crop diets and our dietary supplements. And um, you know, in addition to the settlement of into villages that led directly to the increase, uh, increase in infectious diseases, uh, the cultural intervi intervention of antibiotics counteracted this. But that, you know, it was still the degenerating nutritional diet that the ancients had. So, um, I think that's why evolutionary medicine has taken hold so strong. Okay, so, um, going from that, let's see, to, what, what did I say I was going to continue on in my topics? I gave you guys a, let me see, I gave you guys a thesis of what I wanted to stay on today. I can't find it. I don't know what I did with it. Like again, I said I had so many documents. Um, all right, well, I can't find it right now because I'm swamped with so much stuff. Let's go on to the North American, um, the globalization, continuing the globalization of the North American continent. Um, well, I guess we could continue with the growth of the Sun Belt, um, especially in the 1990s, because some states grew more than 20%, especially Georgia, Florida, Texas, and South Carolina, North Carolina, and it's important to understand that if you want to really study the demographic transition model, because your, your state, your, your um, local uh, county might be in a demographic transition, and you might be wondering, like, for simple things, like, why all of a sudden are all these uh, lighted intersection becoming photo enforced? Or why is all of a sudden, why are they all of a sudden doing all this work in this one area or particular area of road when this other part of road needs it? Because of the influx in the population. That, that's a one major factor that plays a lot in road development for states. I mean, you know, I'm, again, like I said, I'm a one-man operation, and these are just expressingly my own personal opinions. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are facts. I've done this research, this analytical research on my own, and I feel like, for some reason, I feel like I need to do the syndication. I need to get this message out. My brain has been swirling with all this information. I've, I've, there's been a lot of people around me that I've been waking up, that I've wanted to wake up. Um, and but at the same time I've learned there's a lot of zombies out there that you're not even if you can show them the truth they don't want to see it so just move on from the next zombie <laughs> I don't know so okay anyways going to the counter urbanization um, point that I was gonna make it's a trend um, and it's under it's important to understand trendy trendy uh, things in culture because you know when people are like oh, I wear Abercrombie clothes or oh I listen to all the new hottest rap or well you got to understand that's a cultural foundation built in to the conscious and unconscious mind subliminally well I mean it might not just be subliminally but you know it, it starts a lot of it starts in the 1970s it really does so People have moved to smaller cities and rural areas to avoid the perceived problems of urban life, which, you know, uh, there's a lot of that going on now. A lot of the places where the Allstate controls cities, it's, it's, a lot of people are moving out of it. So, I mean, if that's, it's got to speak a lot for its own. And if something were to happen, if something were to happen, they would flock out of the city like rats. And and would and go to de-urbanized areas. It's just that's statistics. Um, so um, I think it's actually important to understand that. And like I said, I promised I was going to be a different dub. I wasn't going to be radical. 
Um, we praise the state. We we love the the all state, and we love the government. And I'm here to preach the good life. So before I go to pro globalization stance and stances, I want to talk about a philosophical ideology. Okay. So this question is on Blatchford. When I did a lot of studies on Blatchford and, and, and Sawtree because it's freedom of the will, freedom of will. And again, that was so important to me because it create, I'm not here to create doubt in your belief system. I'm not here to destroy or that, that system you have that's special to you. I'm just saying what happened to me changed me. Um, I felt for the worse and it was actually for the better. It was just a blessing in disguise. So, okay, let's go on to, before we go to the pro-globalization stance, let's go to freedom of the will. Now, remember, the reason why, and, and this segues, this is a segue from the, the idea and notion of self, of the eternal afterlife in Hinduism and Buddhism, because, the idea of self is really derived from Hinduism and Buddhism, but like e Eve Browning Cole discussed it, and, and so did Descartes. Descartes discussed the idea of self, uh, even though he socially isolated himself from society, which, you know, most people now, because we're human beings, we're supposed to be socialites. We are socialites, and a socially isolated person does become. Um, psychotic I guess so what is living the good life well on Eve Eve Browning Cole's side you have that person discussing she was discussing living well versus like Descartes side is living right so rightful living or well living or the wellness of way of life it, it's just important to understand these ideas because that's going to segue into a lot of people find it it's hard to find the pros for the pro globalization stance because most people are like oh globalization is bad or or either you have blinded enslaved zombified um people who can only just re-speak talking points of pro globalized stances and not document or confirm why they stand in that belief or defend their answers because see I'm all about defending your answer defending your stance if you can't defend it to me then it's not your own ideology it's not you're just talk you're just speaking a talking point okay so there is Pavlo's hierarchy of needs which this kind of takes from that uh, it's a dumbed down version of that. That's 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 psychology 101. I mean, if if, if you're in college, you need to know that, you're, or you're going to learn that. And I mean, there's just there's only one way to understand that. But I'm trying to break it down on a more simple sim, simplified point. So you have the physical, you have security, you have the significant, which is like love, your significant other, and self-esteem, and then self-actualization. Physical is like the, um, you know, making sure all those needs are met of your clothes, your fed, your sheltered, those kind of physical needs. The security is more like job security, if you want to think of it that way, or respect, um, or is a peace of mind. Well, I don't want to say peace of mind. But then the significant, the, the third stage in the pyramid. Uh, of the hierarchical needs for a human being to live that living well and or the living right way of life is love and in love is respect because when you love someone and someone loves you back you give each other respect so that's why that's that third part and self-esteem is fourth in the pyramid and um, here I'm going to show you this okay so love is the third, self-esteem is fourth, and at the top you have self-actualization. Because the top is a not necessary to a human's being survival. At the very top of the pyramid, self-actualization is just actualizing your potential, which is like 
reaching the apex of this pyramid, reaching the apex, the climax of living right or the or living the good life. And it, it's funny because there's so much out there about free will. Look it up. Um, listen to what other people have to say and formulate your own opinion of what living the good life is because some people think it's only monetary. Some people only think it's spiritual. Some people only think it's ideological, which is kind of the same thing, but it's important to note that in this topic, it's all of the conscious mind, the, the idea of self. Again, like we were from the segue of Hinduism and Buddhistic middle path and and the eternal life so i just wanted to bring that in there for a note because we're going to go to the pro globalization stance okay and doing so we we need to outline the pros and the cons but i'd rather start with the pros than just you know always be on the negative side of things even though i i can find more cons than pros okay so um Let's see, I feel like first thing is trade. Because as countries or nation states reduce their barriers, it increases their imports and exports, which is an economic growth. So the standardization of globalization is going to fuel an economic growth in a globalizing world, in a globalizing economy. So that's also why you know most people start right there is the economy because that's what a lot of people are campaigning on right now is like people or a lot of people are attacking certain politicians and saying the real issues at hand is the economy well that's that, that's certainly important and you know the uh what is it uh, national gross domestic product national yeah, the I forget that right now because my brain is just swirling. I, I we're we're in our second hour, and I've been working all day at an antique show, and I'm going to be really busy tomorrow and the rest of the week. So this is my only chance to bring you a show is this evening, and I'm trying to get all this information of uh, introductory sense of globalization. This is really hard for me to formulate all this in a really generalized, simplified idea not to bring you over to the good side or to the dark side i'm just throwing it out there so you can make your own formulated opinions of what i've studied so okay the flood of imports when they bring down their barriers is going to thereby enhance overall national productivity um which that's the gdp the gross domestic product that, that's what i was trying to find and it's that's important to study the gdp because that's really what we statistically analyze an economy by. Sometimes that's what it seems like most of the time. So um, those that cannot just cannot adjust will most likely go out of business. Well, I remember someone telling me about like countries and nation states that get um, uh, loans from the World Bank they have specific regulatory rules to follow. They can't just take a loan from the World Bank as a country and do whatever they want with that money. There's very specific guidelines that they have to do. And again, like, you know, it's, a se it's not a secret, but the main thing in anthropology, a, say a good saying that goes, you either change or die. And you know, you either change with the times or die. And, that's, that, and that goes to say a lot with nomadic um, tribesmen, nomadic herds, nomadic civiliz well, no, I wouldn't say civilization, but nomadic people that they went where the food was. They went where the, they changed. They went where the, the next step in their life was to take them. They followed it. So they changed and they didn't die. And that's why whatever, um, let's write that down because that's, that's a good point. That's why wherever the, whatever surviving Native Americans there are today, those were nomadic hunters, nomadic people that changed with the times and they survived. So it's important to know that because um, going back to 
a pro stance on globalization. I'm going to read you this excerpt. Oppositional movements, as well as among many groups worldwide, show or see hostility towards globalization. And it's sometimes it is deeply felt. I agree with you on that. But as massive as pro, as massive protest at the World Bank uh, and the World Trade Organization, the WTO meetings have been made very obvious because they're not well they're not going to disclose um, the 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 trade agreements of a loan to a country just to anyone or that, that and that's you know that's why a lot of people protest it um, so a lot of people find that the the WTO is a good place to start when criticizing globalization but see I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum because I promised you guys I was going to be a different dub I wasn't going to be radical I, I just wasn't going to be crazy right now okay so we're going to start you know with that pro stance view and and most people pick out the WTO and the World Bank as the first place of criticism in globalization um, and it's just interesting, especially in this economic forum. It is one of the most contentious issues, and supporters generally believe that it is results in a greater economic efficiency that will eventually result in rising uh, prosperity for the entire world. And now, I just, I've heard even people.